The reveal is an active reality project. What does that mean? It means that people are going to be active, it lasts for over four weeks, it's multi-episodic, so every single day there's a new piece of story that's revealed. So we have large-scale projection, we have live performances every Sunday, we also have filmed and cut sequences because this is part game, it's part narrative and it's part adventure and it's all happening across the whole of King's Lynn in West Norfolk. Well in 2017 we worked with the Borough Council to develop a project that would really look at experimentation with the large scale projectors so it fits into Collusion's ethos by building on the work we did before both in terms of the kind of outcomes of the R&D but the skills and the people that we met to do something that hasn't been done before in King's Lynn. So thank you everyone for joining us for the start of Reveal. There's been at least 35, 36 different creatives involved. Musicians, visual artists, illustrators and all kinds. Half of them are from Norfolk or have a very strong connection. The great thing about working with Kings in Borough Council has been their attitude to risk. They're really keen to work with us to do something different that's going to be unique for Kings Lynn. We've got heritage, we've got artists, we've got creators, we've got young people who are always willing to work with new technology. So to have something revealed in our town is very exciting. I play the character of Maya, who's a young woman from Syria who's come over here as a refugee. She's a very strong, brave woman who has faced a lot in her life and yet has to face even more when her boyfriend gets kidnapped. We are currently in, I suppose, Collusion headquarters, rehearsing some scenes this morning which have been going well. Yeah. We're in a fantastic shop here, which is right on Norfolk Street in the heart of Kings Lynn. We've been using this place to rehearse all the live performances. Good people here in Kings Lynn. But also to use it as a studio. We've been filming here with Gavin Toomey, who's done all the assets for us in terms of the filming. Where I am, I cannot say. So all those little bits that you will see on the days when they're revealed in each of the windows as the story progresses, those have been made here in this shop. Even though you think you know what I've been through, you've no idea. So it's been a studio, rehearsal space, as well as an opportunity for us to interact because this is open to the public to come in and find out more about what we're doing. We're here in Kings Lynn, come from Norwich. I've just been here for an explanation of how it's going to work and I'm about to go and see if I can find a, a marker and, um, and see what happens really. People need to look for these. This is R for reveal. And if you hold your phone over this, there's a new opportunity to discover a piece of the story, as well as some of the codes. These are all in different places and spaces, so people have to actively move around and actually discover where these reveals are hidden. And these codes you can collect in your code cracker. It's a good way for people to sort of get out and about and go exploring. And it's not just about the history though, is it? It's about getting people, you know, active, isn't it? And doing something, participating, and being part of something. You're also cracking a code to help the characters working collectively to deliver parts of the story. You're following a map, you're searching and seeking. As part of the Reveal project, we've been working in Kings Lynn with a number of schools and community groups. In fact, just about 300 young people have taken part in the project. They've been making digital light boxes which have been coded with digital maker Katie Marshall and she's actually produced a whole series of coding activities. So every week there's been a new way of coding the light boxes to make different animated effects. Um, the thing we're going to be doing today is going to be making our own digital light box. It's going to be this thing. They're going to be learning to do some basic coding with the BBC Microbit. We're going to be covering a little bit of electronics um, because one of the things we're adding to the BBC Microbit is a near pixel strip and they need to, um, rather than me just showing them and then following along, I want to understand how it's connected and why it's connected the way it is. The light boxes were written into the story at certain points so there, were, there was a cue for children to switch on their light boxes. And on cue! When Margaret says we're going to show the lights, what you want to do is you lift it up and then you can hold it up so it shines high up in the sky. That's the one. one we're doing the final preparation on the rehearsals, which involves various hydraulics and without giving too much away. Um, we've got a few surprises up our sleeve in terms of some of those reveals of how that's going to happen. Do whatever needs to be done. But it's very exciting. It's always exciting putting something together for the first time. I think that's going to work, isn't it? so cool. <laughs> 
I didn't think it would be that high. <laughs> Is she going to have her security sky behind her? No. <laughs> <laughs> We're excited that all of those assets are coming together. The music, the sound, the video, the filming, the text, the costumes, the actors, the performance. We're ready. Fear not, good people of King's Lynn. I come here in peace. I play Margaret of Antioch, who is the patron saint of King's Lynn, and she fought her way out of the belly of a dragon a few years ago. So yes, she's, uh, she's a tough cookie. And the whole of the town will now see the reveal. The conception of the piece is so much beyond just us actors and what we're doing. So there's all of this technology that's going on with finding the codes and then there's the artists who are working on the projections. I promise, sir, I mean no harm. No harm? I heard what Margaret said. And also, I suppose, the audience as well. Like, it's very interactive and they contribute to the story as well. And you have a look for Joe. OK? Look. Thank you. It's a bit like a box set of a narrative, but it happens over four weeks. So it's integrated with the technology, the live performances, the light, the music, the film, as well as the interactive and game locative images that we're putting around the town. Look to my church and see the sign to reassure you that all will be fine. I was the 3D artist on the project, involved in making all the models for the augments you see on your phone, and also the maker of the ring that you see on the projection behind me. Uh, it was such an ambitious project, but one that obviously I was keen to work on with such talent. And I think that more projects could probably try and take uh, a page out of this book. Good luck, my friends. Now I'm away. I saw the opening show and I also looked it up on the internet and we tried to find some codes. I think it's a really nice project and nice event, especially for like kids. And <laughs> yeah, I think it's really nice that the whole city gets included. Sorry, Maya. It appears Joe's gone. The message was cut short by the dragon. Uh, he seems confused and a little bit dazed. I wouldn't listen to what he says. The story has elements of a traditional Christmas narrative and all of the warmth and magic of that. Can you see the dragon in the water hissing at me? And at the same time, there's, there's an aspect of it that is quite important, which is the story of Maya and, and humanising this image that we have of, of refugees coming over and, and actually getting to know someone's story and what they've been through. I lost my brother to the seas. He died when we were fleeing Syria. Which I think is, is incredibly important, particularly in Norfolk area, because there are 100 um, Syrian refugees who are being located here next year. So I think it's also about communities understanding and relating to each other. For my art projection on the Custom House, I very much followed the themes in the reveal script. The story of, about the refugee arriving from Syria, the country's going through a very intense period. And I think the images are very much about Brexit, about refugees, about there's, there's a lot of images of water. I've used images of hands because hands are often used as a kind of stop. It's been brilliant collaborating with Pete Cleary on this. He's brilliant at interactivity and I, th I think that combination of artists working with someone who's brilliant with technology has created something which neither of us could have created on our own. I worked closely with Joe where he did the static imagery and I animated it and then did a technique where you could use your mobile as a remote wand to change what's happening on the, on the building. I've been involved in all of the projections, helping the different artists map their ideas onto the building. Um, I'm making it snow in Kings Lynn, so I'm drawing snowflakes and they'll be projected on TSB in Tuesday Marketplace for the live show, and then it will end up on St. Nick's for the rest of the week. I think the way it's designed, it just looks better bigger, whereas the white one... So it's just been really inspiring to be thrown in with all these people, and we're all just sort of like mucking in and helping each other figure stuff out. I think everyone's been pushed past what they normally do and so there's kind of a sense of anxiety and excitement around each of our individual pieces as we're all collectively trying to put this thing together that no one's ever done before. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too.
But we can't stand here hugging them. We've just been following the map and the codes around and, and taking the pictures and on our phones and collecting the codes as we go. And then we're going to figure it out from there. <laughs> well, it's actually quite fun because we've never really been around these parts of Kings Lynn and it's, when it's trying to get you active, it's like, come on, let's get out and do something instead of just laze around the house all day. <laughs> to lure him to Market Square so we can destroy him and the dragon when they get there. I'm impressed. So am I. <laughs> Let's go, Joe. Margaret, bye. So strike the light, and through my power, we'll see Maya's story on Greyfriars Tower. I wanted to tell a story about Syria and because I'm Syrian-born, Cambridge-based artist. The story is called We Will Return, 93 moons and counting. And this is actually to do with 93 months since the Syrian uprising. So I'm using the idea of burnt matches, one match per month, to explore the weight of destruction on my fellow Syrians. I really love the artwork. It's very important to bring the humanity, the human side, the real story. And if that can be done through art, that's yeah, maybe a medium that can speak out to everybody. And the other letters you've all seen projected this month. C-H-I-L-D. A child. A picture of hope. The final piece needed to defeat you, Dragon. Today's episode of Reveal, the finale, really went wonderfully. We had a terrific audience. You know, I'll be back. <laughs> and everyone got involved in the story, and it was just quite magical to see everyone's response to the surprise of Maya and Joe and the baby, and to the snow that fell um, from Karen's projection. We've had a really nice evening today. We gave out some free soup to the people. It was a cold, wet December day. The people gathered round and we shared a moment of storytelling, of art and of creative activity. And that's the power of what an art and a cultural project can really do.